One of my biggest rooftop tent nightmares came true and now I gotta fix it. This is basically what happens when you forget to shut your tent, step off somewhere, and then a monsoon comes. There's a puddle all underneath this mattress. So we might have to sleep in our vehicles tonight. Who knows? This is not good at all. Ugh, I'm upset. That clip from the Southeast Adventure Vehicle Expo that we went to last week is the perfect example of what happens when you neglect to secure your tent. Rookie mistake, man. We had a vendor booth set up at that expo with Sunshine State Adventure Company and then sometime around midday, I was given a 15 minute notice that we had to be on the other side of the expo to facilitate a seminar on the Florida Adventure Trail. Now to be fair, the weather app says it wasn't gonna rain for another three hours so I kept the tent open just in case we had spectators coming by and wanting to check out the tent and while we were at the seminar, the rain started coming down harder than it has all day and I was scrambling trying to call call people that was still back at the booth to shut it for me. And by the time I got back, there was puddles everywhere inside the tent. Blankets were soaked, clothes were soaked, pillows were soaked. It was a nightmare. I gotta get this thing cleaned out, get rid of all the dampness, get rid of any mildew or mold that may have grown anything like that, and I figured this would be the perfect time to just do a video on rooftop tent maintenance, whether something like this has happened to you or not. It's really important to maintain your tent periodically. So let me show you how I'm gonna do it. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and get this tent open, and then I'm gonna take out the mattress so we can get that inspected. Mattress is out, let's go ahead and take the cover off, throw it into the wash, and then I can look at the foam underneath and make sure that that's still looking okay. All right, let's go throw this in the wash, inspect everything else. All right, so it looks like the foam padding underneath is in good shape. Nothing's wet, nothing's damp. The cover seemed to have done a really good job in preventing water from getting below it. I do see some stains. Uh, you could see them kind of where the creases are. You see some there and some there and some there. That looks to be more like wear and tear type stains. Uh, but wanted to hit this with some soap and water. Hopefully that'll kind of get everything out. I know I probably won't be able to get it out completely, but we will do what we can to at least get this cleaned up and then dried out. The styrofoam padding that's underneath uh, is in really good shape, but uh, there's definitely no stains on that. So we are good over there. Now that we've kind of washed down the foam padding, I'm gonna just let it air dry. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna go and spray all the walls here with just soap and water, wipe it down with a rag, and then we'll use a special chemical that uh, John Berkmeyer told me about. We'll show you that in just a minute. But for now, let's get this at least cleaned off with some soap and water. the walls pretty much cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum the entire floor area, sand, debris, all that stuff that's been in here, and then we'll give that a little scrub down as well. So 
now that we have the inside clean, we're gonna go ahead and clean the outside. Just because it's on the outside, it doesn't mean it's not gonna have mildew on it. In fact, it may have even more because the outside's getting wet, it's getting rained on, and then when you fold your tent down, all that's getting squished in and that's the area where you're gonna see a lot more mold than you would on the inside of the tent where you're not always going to get water unless you're at the expo and the monsoon comes down. But yeah, let's go ahead and clean up the outside. All right, so I got everything wiped down with just a soap and water solution. I put all the windows down just so I can let it air dry for about a couple of hours. It's not super wet, we just wiped it down, so it's not gonna take that long to air dry. Once that air dries, I'm gonna apply another solution that will basically kill the mildew and protect it more in the future. And I'll show you what that is when we get back. All right, just because you have your tent cleaned up, don't neglect your ladder. You gotta make sure you take care of the ladder as well because a lot of times, dirt, debris, grime, they all get into the areas where your ladder will telescope. So you need to clean all this stuff up, uh, get rid of all that stuff. It also will get a lot of those, those push pins, it gets stuck when there's dirt in them. So what I usually like to do, wipe down the ladder uh, cloth and just a cleaner, and then I'll go and put some WD-40 where it telescopes so that it can slide a little bit smoother. So now that it's been air drying for about a couple of hours, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do one more treatment, which is Nick Wax. This is the Tent and Gear Solar Wash. This was recommended to me by John Berkmeyer of Sunshine State Adventure Company. We're gonna spray the whole tent down with this and then rinse it off with some water using a sponge or cloth. And then we're gonna let it air dry and then we should be good to go. All right, so the mattress cover has been laundered and I made sure it was completely dry before putting it back on. I put it back onto that foam padding and styrofoam, which I also cleaned and made sure it's completely dry. You wanna make sure everything is dry because you don't wanna create a barrier inside there where mold and mildew can also grow on that foam padding. But everything is looking good now. It's looking like it was when it came out of the factory, brand new, super clean. Uh, it was tough getting this thing back on, uh, but I found that if you bend the foam padding and the styrofoam underneath it, just kind of bend it just a little bit, you'll be able to slip this cover back on easily and it'll just basically pop back into place. Coming inside the tent, I just want to make sure everything is cleaned off. I have uh, allowed this to air dry for about 24 hours. I kept it open all night. Everything is dried now. And I'm just taking a look at the spots where we had mold and mildew before. We had some there, we had some up there had some underneath the windows and I especially had some in there in the corners as you saw in the video earlier that's where the water had pulled up so we had like some mildew and mold and it looks like yeah it's all pretty much gone even on this side and it smells good in here too it doesn't smell like if I were to use vinegar and water to wipe this thing down with uh, you also don't want to use bleach because bleach can damage the fabric so I'm glad that the Nick Wax power wash did a really good job in getting rid of all that mold without leaving any kind of funky smells. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the mattress back in and we'll be finished.
All right, so hopefully this video was short and to the point. I don't think I needed any B-rolls. I just really wanted to instruct you guys on how to maintain your rooftop tent. They're not cheap. You don't want to be ruining this stuff, especially after you've paid thousands of dollars for them. So you want to maintain it. And depending on how often you use your tents, it's going to depend on how much maintenance you have to do. We noticed there was already mildew growing on this tent prior to the expo because when we went on our Florida Adventure Trail trip, we came back home and I didn't get a chance to air the tent out because it was just storming badly for like two weeks. And I think in the time that that tent was closed, it was already damp inside. It started to get a little bit of mildew and that's why we had to get that cleaned out today. But usually after every trip, I am always opening the tent and I am letting it air dry in the sun. Every trip you have to do that. Like you don't want it to be damp or have any condensation left over. That's just a breeding ground for mold and mildew. Now this Nikwax stuff, this solar wash stuff is awesome and I can't recommend it enough. They even have another product that pairs really well with this called Solar Proof. Basically after you've cleaned the tent and used the stuff, you take the Solar Proof and spray everything down and it'll just protect it even more from fading, dirt, and water. I think I'm gonna get that next and just do a treatment with that. Now every couple of months or so, you do kinda wanna wipe it down, make sure things are clean, and maybe once or twice a year do a full cleanup like I did just now. Now the ladder, I try to maintain that after every trip. After a day on the trail, you're going up and down that thing with dirty clothes, dirty shoes, dust and grime and dirt is going to get into the little crevices that's going to make it hard for that ladder to telescope. It's going to get stuck in there so you want to make sure that you are wiping that ladder down, get rid of all the dirt that are on the steps. Also those little tabs that open the ladder, sometimes those things come off. I've had a couple of them already come off on me. So you want to make sure that those are secure as well and that they're not getting stuck with dirt. Take care of your ladder all the time. Use some WD-40 so that it slides. You want that thing to also work properly. But anyway, that's it. That's my video on how I maintain my rooftop tent. If there are ways that you like to maintain your rooftop tent or even your ground tent, share it in the comments below. I like to see what other processes people are using. It helps me learn as well. But if you like this video, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. You're still here? All right, well, while you're here, this is a perfect time for me to tell you that we are less than 500 subscribers away from 10,000. Like I am so excited about that and any help you can give to make that happen would be greatly appreciated. When we hit 10,000, I'm gonna be doing a great giveaway. I've already been talking to the companies I've been working with to plan something really, really cool. So if you're not subscribed yet, please make sure you do so that you can get notified of when videos come out and I can give you updates exactly on what we're gonna be giving away. It's gonna be pretty awesome.